Now, I've actually spoken to many students and a lot of students find this particular topic challenging, restricted domain and range. Hence, I am going to go through this particular topic in this video tutorial. For question one to four, I need to answer part one and part two. Okay, so part one, state the range of f of x. Part two, find f inverse of x, stating its domain and range. Okay, now, for question one, I have the function f of x equal x squared plus three. x is a real number, restriction x is greater than three. My very first step is to sketch f of x equal x squared plus three for the domain x is any real number. So I'm going to do that, ladies and gents, over here. There you have it. Now, I'm going to restrict my domain to x is greater than 3. Okay, so first of all, I am going to label x equal 3. Put 3 into the function. 3 squared is 9 plus 3 is 12. So at x equal 3, I have a y value of 12. Now, because x equal 3 is not included in the domain, over here I can draw a circle and I don't shade in the circle. Okay. Right, I just want my graph for x is greater than 3. So for x is less than or equal to 3, I'm going to rub out the curve. So I rub out this part over here. There you have it, and rub out this part over here. So that is my graph for f of x equal x squared plus 3. x is a real number, restriction x is greater than 3. Now to find the range of f of x, I need to focus, I need to focus on the y-axis. So in particular, I'm looking at this particular portion over here. I can see that f of x can be more than 12. Okay, because over here the curve goes to positive infinity. So the range is that f of x is more than 12. Okay, f of x is a real number. Let's move on to part 2. Okay, for part 2, I need to find f inverse of x stating its domain and range. The very first step is to let y equal to the original function f of x, so x squared plus 3. And now what I need to do is make x the subject, so I'm going to quickly do that. Okay, so I can conclude that f inverse of x is equal plus or minus root of x minus 3. Okay, this is looking beautiful people, this is looking beautiful. I need to determine if it's the positive or the negative square root. To do that, I need to look at the range of the inverse function. So, range of the inverse function. The range of the inverse function is just the domain of the original function. Before I write anything, I'm going to get my notation correct. So, f inverse of x Okay, that represents the range of the inverse function. The f inverse of x has to be greater than 3. f inverse of x is a real number. So what I can conclude is that because the f inverse of x is non-negative, okay, I repeat, because the f inverse of x is non-negative, I must take the positive root. So the inverse function is equal to square root of x minus 3. Right, we're nearly done, we're nearly done people. I need to find the domain of the inverse function. So let's look at the domain. The domain of the inverse function is just the range of the original function. So the range is over here, f of x is greater than 12. Before I do anything, let me get my notation correct for the domain. I need to write x, okay? So it has to be greater than 12. x is a real number. There you go, people. Done. Let's move on to question number 2. I've got f of x equal 4x minus 2. x is a real number. x is greater than or equal to 0. What I'm going to do, first of all, is sketch f of x for the domain x is any real number. So let me, let me quickly do that. x y 0 I know that the y intercept is minus 2 and the x intercept will be 1 over 2 positive gradient the graph looks something like that 
Okay, right, so this is the graph of f of x for the domain x is any real number. I want to restrict the domain to x is greater than or equal to 0. So the part of the graph that represents x is less than 0, I'm going to rub it out. So that's this part over here. Now, over here I can draw a circle and shade it in because x equals 0 is included in the domain. Now, I want to find the range of the function. So to find the range of this particular function, I need to focus on the y-axis. So in particular, I'm looking at this particular portion over here. I can see from my graph that f of x starts at minus 2 and goes to positive infinity. Hence, the range is f of x is greater than or equal to minus 2. f of x is a real number. There you have it. Let's move on to part 2. I want to find the inverse function of f. My very first step is to let y equal 4x minus 2. Once I've done that, I need to make x the subject. So, I'm going to quickly make x the subject. I have that 4x is equal y plus 2. Hence, x is equal y plus 2 all over 4. To get my final mark for the inverse function of f, I need to write f inverse of x is equal x plus 2 all over 4. Okay, right. Okay, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. We're nearly there, people. We can do this. Right, to find the domain of the inverse function, I know that it is just the range of the original function. Okay, before I do anything, let me get my notation correct. For the domain, I put x. Go back to the range of the original function. We have greater than or equal to minus 2. So x is greater than or equal to minus 2. x is a real number. There. Now, let's move on to the range of the inverse function. Okay, so the range of the inverse function, it is just the domain of the original function. So let's go back to the domain of the original function. Like I, like I always say, first of all, I need to get my notation correct. So for the range of the inverse function, I put f inverse of x. Okay, that there has to be greater than or equal to 0. f inverse of x is a real number. And there you have it. That completes question 1 and 2. Okay, moving on to question 3 and 4. So question 3, I've got f of x equal 1 over x, x is a real number, restriction x is greater than 2. To find the range of f of x, my very first step is to sketch the graph of f of x, and I'm going to sketch it for the domain x is any real number. Okay, so this is what I have. There you are. Now, I want to restrict my domain to x is greater than 2. So first of all, I'm going to label x equal 2. Okay, then I put x equal 2 into my function, I get 1 over 2. So at x equal 2, the y value is 1 over 2. And because x equal 2 is not included in my domain, I draw a circle, but I don't shade it. There you are. Now, I'm going to get rid of the part of the graph that represents x is less than or equal to 2. So that's this part over here. <sighs> Gone. And this part over here. So that there represents my beautiful function f of x equal 1 over x for this particular restricted domain. Now, I want to find the range of f of x. What I need to do is focus on the y-axis. In particular, I'm looking at this particular portion over here. Now, looking at that portion there, I can see that f of x is going to be bigger than 0, but less than 1 over 2. f of x is a real number. That there is my range for f of x. Part 1, done. Okay, let's move on to part 2. I want to work out the inverse function stating its domain and range. First step, I'm going to let y equal 1 over x. And then I need to make x the subject, and if I do that, I get x equal 1 over y. Hence, the inverse function is 1 over x. That looks very juicy. The inverse function is the original function. Okay, nice one. Now, I want to find the domain of the inverse function. Well, the domain of the inverse function is just the range of the original function. Before I do anything, I need to get my notation correct. So, for the domain, I have x. 
Go back to the range of the original function. We've got that f of x is between 0 and 1 over 2. So I must have that x is between 0 and 1 over 2. x is a real number. Okay, so that there is the domain of the inverse function. Now, I want the range of the inverse function. I know that the range of the inverse function is just the domain of the original function. Okay, I need to get my notation correct. The range of the inverse function, well, it is uh, f inverse of x, and that there, okay, has to be more than 2. Okay, the reason why it's more than 2, because if I go back to the domain over here, I've got more than 2. f inverse of x is a real number. Okay, that there is the range. Okay, and inverse function is over here. Okay, moving on to question 4. I've got f of x equals square root x minus 2. x is a real number. Restriction x is greater than or equal to 5. Before I look at square root x minus 2, I'm going to go back to the basic graph of square root x. So let g of x equal square root x. Now, ladies and gents, we know what square root x looks like. It looks something like this over here. Now, if I want square root of x minus 2, in terms of g, that's g of x minus 2. Okay, so I can conclude that square root of x minus 2 is just square root x shifted 2 units to the right. Hence, I obtain a sketch that looks something like this over here. There you have it. Now, let's go back to part 1 of question 4. I want to find the range of f of x. So I'm going to first of all sketch f of x. So it's this sketch over here. There you have it. Okay, now this is interesting. I have my sketch, but I want to restrict the domain to x is greater than or equal to 5 people. So, I'm going to first of all label x equal 5. So, here it is. Okay, and then put 5 into my function. 5 minus 2 is 3, square root of 3. So, at x equal 5, I have square root of 3. And what I can do is draw a circle over here and shade it because x equal 5 is included in my domain. Now, the part of the graph that represents x is less than 5, I'm going to get rid of. Okay, so this part over here. And there you have it. That is my function, f of x equals square root of x minus 2. For x is a real number, restriction x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, now I want to find the range of f of x. I need to focus on the y-axis, so in particular, I'm looking at this portion over here. I can see that f of x can be square root 3 or more. So the range is f of x is greater than or equal to square root 3. f of x is a real number. Okay, absolutely brilliant. Now, let's move on to part 2. I want to find the inverse function of f of x equals square root x minus 2. Ladies and gents, you have to make y equal to square root of x minus 2. After which you have to make x the subject. So I'm going to very quickly do that. Okay, to obtain the final mark for the inverse function, I write down f inverse of x is equals x squared plus 2. Now, I want the domain of the inverse function. I know that the domain of the inverse function is just the range of the original function. Before I do anything, let me get the notation for the domain correct. So x, go back to the range of the original function, greater than or equal to 3. So x is greater than or equal to 3. x is a real number. Range of the inverse function. Get your notation correct. So the range of the inverse function of f uh, the notation is f inverse of x, okay? Well, the range of the inverse function is just the domain of the original function, so go back to the domain of the original function, greater than or equal 5. So f inverse of x is greater than or equal to 5. f inverse of x is a real number. Okay, so that's the end of this video tutorial and on the juicy topic of restricted domain and range. 
If you found this video tutorial useful, please don't forget to subscribe.